Like so many, daily journals have become a normal part of my organizational process. They help me capture my ideas and generally get my act together, and I believe they can do the same for you. When I first got into this whole notebook or journaling process, I had stepped into my first job in which I had complete autonomy with my day, meaning like every aspect of my day job was really determined by me. I was not waiting around other people necessarily. I had complete authority to sort of determine what my day was going to look like, when I was going to do things, how I was going to do them, and no one was particularly breathing down my throat about anything. And what made that amazing was that all those things were true. It was really kind of up to me to manage my day. But on top of all that, I was managing my first book contract for my book, The Sleepover, and uh, also trying to be a dad and trying to be, you know, at church and be a friend and all these sort of things. And honestly, I just felt completely lost. Uh, the processes that I've been using were failing me miserably, and I might have had processes uh, for managing my comics workload that helped me know what I needed to get done and when I needed to get done with it, but I didn't have a process in place for managing or organizing tasks or to-do lists and so on, and it was really just a serendipitous running into a video on the process of bullet journaling that sort of changed everything for me. Now this video is not about bullet journaling. There's already a million videos about that and if you were to simply do a YouTube search and go on the internet you'll find more videos than you could hope to find about people who turn their bullet journals into this amazingly beautiful art project. But for me this is more about how bullet journals taught me that I could create my own system and I believe you can too and I want to encourage you to use and implement all these different ideas to find something that helps you get organized and all that good stuff. So I figured by showing you a little about what about what I do that might help you figure out what you can do. But before I get into that I want to recommend that if you like these sort of talks in which I talk about things like journals and uh, other productivity tips that you might want to sign up for my new newsletter. It's on Substack. It's called the Creative Productivity Corner and this is a regular newsletter that I want to send out on a more regular basis than what I do through my mailing list on my website. I really want to honor that mailing list through the website as sort of like I only send you guys something when there's something new to talk about or I've released a new email piece or tool or something like that for my email subscribers. But this is more like if you want to hear me talk about things this is the place to do it. The link is in the description below. It's free to sign up and become a subscriber. You get access to the same things I send everyone else on my mailing list, but what you also get is like a every other week article in which I talk about some sort of productivity tip or something of that effect. So if it's something that sounds interesting to you, click in the link below and sign up for it. Um, hope you do. Thanks. So why something like a little tactile notebook as opposed to writing things digitally and having vast, you know, online notebooks or through an iPad or something like that. What is it about having a little notebook or journal that really resonated with me? Well, it's not just about having something that's analog. It's about having something that feels tangible and breaks up the sort of thinking process that you might have when you're thinking digitally. I love digital note-taking tools. I plan to do an entire video about Notion up soon, about sort of the things I've been learning there and how it's been really kickstarting my uh, productivity process. But for me, if I'm ideating or if I want to capture something quickly and be able to ruminate on it or build a plan, I don't necessarily want to keep track of those things on a computer. I feel like I already spend so much time looking at a computer screen either for my job or working on comics or just for leisurely activities. It's nice to be able to sit in the backyard or to sit in a chair in the middle of a room with just a notebook in my hand and a pen and be able to capture ideas quickly and succinctly and be able to like let my mind be completely focused on that process. But what are my different journals? I have different ones for different processes, and that's what I want to show you. Like I said, bullet journaling taught me really how to create my own system. So while bullet journals is its own, like, full-blown system, I've taken elements of it that I really like, and I've taken elements from other places that I really like to arrive at something that feels pretty natural for me. So I figured I'd show that to you. Um, so we'll hop over here and look at my desk, and I'll show you what I got going on. 
All right, so let's take a look at my notebook process. So these are the notebooks I've kept over the years. Most of them are kind of recent, but they break down into two essential categories. They're sort of a bullet journaling style process for sort of daily capture of tasks and duties and things like that. And then an idea creation or idea storage uh, facility place, which would be like my single purpose notebooks or these moleskins. And uh, I'll walk through a little bit of both uh, each and how I've sort of arrived at a hybrid option, which would be my Kindle Scribe. So the first thing would be bullet journals. Bullet journaling for me, like I said, was sort of the catalyst for everything. It's the, it's the place where I began to realize like, oh, I can create my own system. So you can see like my first major one I created back in 2021. It actually ran all the way to the end of 2022. And then my most recent one was begun in 2023. And I actually sort of stopped keeping it because of the Kindle scribe, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about, about that more in just a second. But um, if you were to get into bullet journaling, what you'd actually learn is that there's like these really detailed processes that people go through where they turn these bullet journals into these amazing art projects. And like, I'm so busy making books and this sort of thing, like I don't have time for it to turn into a full blown art project, but I did discover sort of a process that works really well for me. And that's to essentially have only kind of two main things that I keep track of within my bullet journal and that is the daily uh, the weekly log in sort of a daily log so what am I trying to accomplish for the week and what am I going to try to get done on each individual day and I'll show you what I'm doing for that process in the scribe in just a minute but I essentially write out you know what am I going to do and if that thing gets done for the week it gets a sort of square that I mark off and if I don't end up getting it done that week it gets a dash showing that it's been kicked off into another week and you'll see I do the same thing on a daily basis so I would write out what I'm trying to do and generally what I do is I keep personal projects personal creative projects over on the left and then work is on like the the right hand side of an individual uh, page and so I would jot out whatever I'm going to get done today and and then if I get it done, like I said, a box, and if not, it gets kicked out. And you can see in some cases, like I still fall through. And that's another thing, like when you get into these processes, what made bullet journals work for me was that it eventually became something that sort of like cemented in my day in day out process. I do it every single day. I keep track of it every single day. And there's days that I might've missed or I was a little bit more lax, but the point is it's become like a full blown habit for how I get things done. Now, one of the things that I really didn't like in bullet journaling as a general thing is this idea of sort of like you create um, like that daily log, weekly log, quarterly log and that sort of plan. But you also it encourages you that if you are coming up with an idea, like let's say you want to start planning for vacation or something like that, you would create a spread randomly in the middle of the notebook and you would keep track of that up in the index. And like logistically, this is an amazing sort of like process that um, that they've come up with. But for me, I just I, I don't like that. I sort of like one idea, one notebook. I, I've never been able to carry a general purpose notebook and it just doesn't work for me. So trying to have a bullet journal that tried to be a general purpose notebook for like my creative projects as well as my daily planning, like it just never clicked for me and I really didn't enjoy it. And until um, I purchased my Kindle Scribe. Now the reason the Kindle Scribe works so well for me is that it sort of gets rid of this sort of distinction of needing to break up individual spreads with things um, like, you know, an individual idea or something that comes up and keeping track of it in an index by being able to create endless amounts of notebooks that could be only a few pages long or it could be hundreds of pages long depending on like you know whatever i'm trying to do so for this year the reason why my 2023 um bullet journal is incomplete is because i decided at the end of 2023 to try bullet journaling in a kindle scribe um, i had seen a video from cal newport who's like a guy i talk about on this channel all the time in which he had purchased a remarkable tablet and he really loved it and this um really got me excited too and i decided i wanted to give one a try but i wanted to do the kindle scribe instead of the remarkable because i do like everything in my my uh, kindle i read everything there and this looked really cool to me so anyway this year i decided to create a 2024 bullet journal and what i love about this is like this whole thing is my bullet journal it's got the daily log the weekly log a time block schedule i basically create a folder for any sort of planning process that i want to do that's pertained specifically to this year 
and then I can just access this and do whatever I want with it as needed. So I have the daily log, weekly log, time block. I have sermon notes. I've got a journal that I keep in here, future plans and future log, notes from a recent men's conference, calendar, and everything at the bottom of the notebook tends to be my least used assets. But it's cool to have them, I guess, at the end of the day. And let me take a quick note in here. Let me show you this, how this works. Like with my weekly log, I come in here and I set up what my week is going to be. So this is from the past week. And uh, if I finish it, like I said, I block it out. If I didn't, I put a dash on it. And if I haven't done it yet and still have the plans to, it's just still sitting there. But one other thing that I tend to do that uh, during my weekly planning that is helpful is that if I have an idea of when I want to get that done, I go ahead and mark it on the uh, on the outside with a parentheses and I transfer that date into the daily log. Uh, so like for this week, you know, I had to run a new video. I'm filming that video. And I also did take uh, this trash down to the yard. So I went and do that and I did finish two books this week. So that's cool. And I did do some reading on the Moria book. And then uh, what I do is I just create this on the next spread. Whenever I'm ready to do that, I can hit to the side and I can create my new weekly spread. For the daily log, it's a simple process. I create new pages and I go ahead and just mark out the days. And what's cool about this is like, let's say I end up needing more space for Monday. You can highlight things and move those documents around. So I just create placeholders at the beginning of the week. And then as I'm uh, writing, if I need to move something or adjust it, I'll go ahead and do it. And I go ahead and take those items that I had slotted out in the time block uh, journal and put it into specific dates. Now, I also keep journals or notebooks for other type of things. So uh, and this has sort of effectively replaced all other notebooks for me. It's my primary notebook tool. I use it for everything. So I have notebooks for every individual subject I'm working on, book projects, my role-playing games, some work stuff, other business thoughts, ideas, just general ideas. It's a catch-all for everything. I really, really love the uh, the Kindle Scribe and e-writers. And what I love about it is I get that tactile experience of writing on something, but I also get the sort of the convenience of digital tools that so many people enjoy and I do enjoy as well. It's this like amazing best of both worlds option. So if it's something you can afford, I highly recommend checking out a Kindle Scribe. Okay, and then the actually the new process I'm using, again, something I saw from Cal Newport, is this idea of a single purpose notebook. Now, while the Kindle Scribe has sort of taken over everything for me, it is sort of my one stop catch all. I like I, words can't express how much I love that thing. Um, I, I love this idea that Cal talked about in a recent video where he said, you know, uh, he was in a situation where he couldn't take his remarkable with him and he wanted to make progress on an idea and so he had these little pocket notebooks so he would just throw a notebook in his pocket and take it with him in a pen and if he had a few minutes he would work on it on an idea for that book but the idea was that you it's not a general purpose small pocket notebook which was like what this was where I just tried to capture every random idea that came to mind or if someone gave me a quote or whatever and like I said my brain breaks on this sort of thing. I just don't like it. But um, the idea that I could create a notebook that was about a specific subject and keep that with me if I wanted to make progress on an idea, that really resonates with me. So like my one I'm using the most right now is business thoughts as I'm thinking through like, how do I want to change the way I do things going forward? This notebook is with me all the time and I just constantly will take it out and make a little notebook project like I'm going to see a movie tomorrow. This will probably be in my pocket and if I want to work on something, I'll think of it up. But I also have one for Deepwater Creek because I'm thinking through a lot of rewrites to the ending of the book and an idea that came up to a new story idea that I came up with when I was on vacation recently. And then these are two newer projects that are sort of just like in their very infancy states of like development. But I love this idea of like, I, I can get on board with this, like with the idea of a, a pocket notebook that is all about capturing ideas for a single idea. And uh, when you're done with it, you know, you're done with it. Like, let's say I maybe only get like halfway through this notebook for this project that I'm working on. That's fine. It didn't need to serve the purpose of the whole thing. That's partly why I like these like thinner feel books over the composition books because there's less pages. But either way, like this is a fairly cheap option and it's really great for capturing single ideas. And then if it's worthwhile, I'll bring it into a digital tool and, and keep up with it somewhere else. But yeah, single, uh, single subject notebooks, 
really cool idea. I'm really enjoying using that process. Well, that's my notebook process. I hope it's been insightful for you to be able to take a look. And like I said, I hope the most important thing that you walk away with from this experience is that you can create your own system. You don't need to take a system that I use or somebody else, but if you see something that someone has created and you're like, that sounds really cool. I like what that person's doing. I like how he keeps a single purpose notebook or keeps a bullet journal or uses Notion or whatever. The point is to find the system that works for you. And I think analog tools can have a really big part to that process is a completely different way to break up your thinking and get yourself in a space in which you can be focused and just allow ideas to sort of flow through you and get really intentional about keeping track of whatever the heck it is you're doing. I'm always trying new things. The Kindle Scribe was a new thing. The single purpose new notebook is a thing. I just started doing the single purpose notebook and check back with me in six months. Maybe it's something I keep doing. Maybe it's something I don't, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it now. And I like the idea of seeing um, these little notebooks exist as something that I can look back on and be able to have like an artifact that has things I've learned about. So uh, I hope this was helpful to you. And if you like learning more about how I'm managing my work in production, uh, I want you to check out this video right here in which I show you a comic production spreadsheet that I use to keep track of all the ins and outs of my comic book process, kind of how I make sure I hit my deadlines. Again, hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.